So please welcome to Lassie Pug for the first time, Mike Madsdorf. Thank you, Michael. Um, a couple of just things up front. Um, I don't work for Apple. I don't actually have a job right now. Uh, and uh, I'd like to welcome you all to the uh, Los Angeles Final Cut Pro user group, just for a minute. Um, and uh, Sam Messman, who's somewhere in the audience, prompted me to make a keynote, which I had no intention of doing. I was just going to sit up here and talk for a few minutes. Um, and this is the question that is, was, is the question, is can you do Final Cut on a feature? And the answer is yes. Um, again, you, it's on IMDb, I am tethered, I can't say it, but uh, this was a tweet from me early on. So I want you to know just where I stood originally and how I felt about it. Uh, I think you can, if you go back on my personal Twitter feed, you'll see this to somebody, Steve Martin or somebody, I don't know. Um, anyway, I, I was one of the people who saw it and was like, wow, this is awesome, and then I bought it, and then I sent it back and got my money back. And, um, <laughs> was, I was pissed because the entire world was upside down. And uh, anyway, I don't want to bore you too much with personal stories, but I was, I, I want you to know that I am not an, I was not an enthusiast originally. Um, and there's all this stuff that comes up for everybody. It's like, why is this different? Why is this called a project? Why is, what's an event? Why is there no tracks? Why can't I yeah, have a color wheel? All this, you know, and this list is long for people, uh, their complaints. That everyone here has something that they've picked up and said, what the fuck? Um, and I was that, I'd, the first, I'd, this is a short story, the first time I uh, used it, my, was, my wife had a video that she needed to, she was recording a video interview for a job. And uh, I said, this is a perfect opportunity for me to uh, impress my wife and uh, you know, work on this software, piece of cake. It, everything is intuitive, you know, there's a button on the Avid, you can find that button on Final Cut, you can find a button on the Lightworks, you can find that button on the EPICs, for God's sakes. Um, and I got in and I spent a half an hour doing nothing but throwing things out of sync and uh, forcing myself to sleep on the couch for a couple of weeks. But so I went back and finished it in Final Cut 7 in a matter of minutes. But it was completely confused and, by all of this stuff and uh, many other things. Um, over the course of the film, here's what works for us. Dailies, you can do your dailies. Um, you can work on, this show was Alexa, uh, ProRes Quad 4, you can work on Red. Uh, what works, you can edit. Um, you can cut sound, you can cut picture, you can do visual effects, there's, uh, there's not enough markers, but uh, you can edit on the machine, the box, it's, it works. Um, you can deal with Pro Tools, you can turn over multiple tracks in an AAF, uh, handily. We had to figure some things out in respect to that, but um, you can do it. Uh, you can make EDLs. Rainier, if you're, if you're out there, or this EDLX is the one tool. It, it works great. You, the, one interesting thing about uh, dealing with what is essentially pretty young software, because it's Final Cut 7, Final Cut X should not be called Final Cut Pro. It should be called something else, because it's not Final Cut Pro. Um, but uh, you get real direct contact with all these developers like Hodgetts and, and Rainier Stankey and people, really smart people who are doing really smart things and they fix things for you and make things for you and the guys at Apple too. Um, you can make change notes. They don't work with Virtual Katy, which is kind of a pig for anyone who uh, works in the feature world, but they do work. They're accurate. Um, like Avid, like anything else, you gotta go through, you gotta clean your sequence out, take out speed changes, take out things that shouldn't be there, and it works. Um, there's a couple other options for change notes as well. Uh, this thing called MF Change Note, which is uh, some guy named MF makes it. Anyways, I, I was talking to my friends uh, who were working on the Fincher movie, uh, Gone Girl on Premiere, and, and they were using some of this other stuff, and we are talking about that. But the MF Change Note, and there's uh, Conformalizer. It's a tool made by some of these people down in New Zealand, which is like an EDL-based uh, change note utility. So you can, you can do your change notes. There's a VFX pipeline that we worked out. We were on Alexa. We were pulling frames from the original, putting them in the nuke in the guys, uh, with the guy next door, applying the CDL. She was sending us back, you know, version 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 27 of whatever effects, and color was lining up, frames were lining up, all that stuff's fine. And at the end of the day, the movie got conformed down a light iron via XML, EDL, reference movies, same as you would anywhere else. Um, all the main bits of the process 
they, they work. It, it was interesting because there's no precedence for any of this. You know, there's, all of us are here and we come from Avid or Avid or Lightworks or whatever. And I, I was, I did the second movie on the Lightworks ever a long time ago. And the first one was California. My friend John Portnoy did that, if anybody even know him. But um, California was the first one and the second one was the Beverly Hillbillies. A little bit of a, I didn't get the cool one there, but uh, anyway, um, it's fun because you get to figure stuff out and you get to be the one to sort of find out what works and what doesn't. We, you know, we found a lot of stuff that didn't work um, or it was misunderstood. And, and I think one of the things people say, tracks, 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 where's my tracks, where's my tracks? And if you can get a firm understanding on roles, R-O-L-E-S, um, it's, it's just really, really cool what can be done with them as far as working with them handing off the sound, using them. Um, there's, there's a ton there. And again, Michael said, I'm writing a book. I am writing a book, and hopefully it'll be done soon. And there's lots of details in there. And it's super deep. That's the one thing that's weird about this machine. It's uh, about this software. You look at it, and it looks like iMovie. And it looks so simple. Uh, and it is on the surface. But it's the deepest soft. The, there's so much that it can do. And, but it's all buried. It's too much, in my opinion. I like having things out. Um, you know, my kitchen, all my tools are right out there. Um, and it's kind of the same thing with Final Cut, but they're in there, and they're, it's, there's stuff in there you, you would be shocked to find. It's really, really cool. Um, there's some things in my view that need improvement, and this is a short list. Uh, tracks, somewhere between tracks and rolls is, would make me happy. And what I would like for Apple to do is what I'm calling regions, like all your dialogue sort of settles to the top. All your music sort of settles to the bottom. All your effects sort of settle in the middle. Um, and to be able to color code things uh, like that. Because it, it, not having tracks, I don't care because everything's searchable, everything's fast. If you, all, everything's tagged for what it is. Dialogue, music, effects, stems, uh, fully, whatever. It all, you can find it all fast. But if it sort of, you know, separated itself a little bit, it'd be, I would be happy. Uh, more types of markers. I want to be able to customize the screen more. Um, version 10.1.1, everything that was on the what's new was uh, we had complained about. 10.1.2, everything that's on the what's new, 99% of it was stuff we had asked for. Um, and they they do respond, which is cool. And uh, but uh, and you know the other last things on my list here is, is more things that are searchable. Tons of things are searchable, but I want more. Um, and they know, they, they have a, a list for me up there. But uh, you know, in any case, yes, you can do it. And uh, I encourage people, because there's ways to save money. Uh, it has similar characteristics to Premiere, in which you, know, you can use uh, original media, save time with visual effects, save money with visual effects. My big thing is, like on a movie, from day one now, you have visual effects, you have music, and sound in-house. Not, maybe not day one, but pretty soon after shooting stops, these people are starting. And on most movies, there's a visual effects, visual effects artist sitting there for five to seven to eight weeks doing temps. Nothing is final ready because they're working from editorial media, they're working from whatever. If you're working in Premiere or in Final Cut from original media, you can pull your frames right there and everything they can be doing, whether or not it's gonna be in the movie at the end of the day, everything that they're doing can be for final. And that is huge. From, I mean, if, you have a, if you're doing a $10 million movie, $5 million movie, you can knock 100 grand off just for that, right at the beginning. That's an entire day of shooting or something else that's really important. So um, anyways, who wants to talk? Mm -hmm. Did you utilize the sort of uh, multi-res type feature where you have proxy and high res and kind of switch between them based on what needs you had at the time? Yeah, we had, um, we were working on uh, 2K, ProRes 444, they did color time it, and we had to go use the CDL and go back to the original media that way. Wasn't quite there yet to use the original because it was an anamorphic de-squeeze that was not appropriate for the movie. Um, but uh, yeah, we used, we were 2K, uh, ProRes 4444, and proxy of that. And we would, like sometimes, guys would just go and edit on the weekend or whatever and just take a drive with proxies. Um, or we traveled internationally and um, we were, the editor was only working on proxies in a hotel room. How did you deal with that aspect and, and did it seem to be um, 
a limitation for you, or did you somehow get past that? And if so, how? Um, I think there's a lot of different ways that people work when they trim. Um, I've always been, like in Final Cut 7 and other things, I've always been like a blade tool guy where I'll just like cut things and then, and then pull them out. Um, there is this, uh, I don't know if you get exactly what you want, but there's, you know, numeric trim, you know, click on a, on a transition, enter numbers, it goes. You can drag it out, it goes. You can um, use this thing called the precision editor, which oddly is real, it's got really cool features, but it, it, doesn't, it doesn't do enough. Um, where you can see uh, the extension of the A side and the, and the prelap of the B side, and you can you know go to where you want, and then you have to click where you want to cut. Um, it, there's some weird stuff in there. It depends on how you do it, I think. Um, people talk to me about, well, you know, I can't like on the Avid, you know, you want to you want to keep this piece of, this piece of sound in sync uh, way over here, and so you got to open up this and 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 this, and this, and this just to keep you know just because you want to shift something, and that sort of is off the table here because everything depending on the way it's connected, and there's ways to easily move connections, um, we'll just hang with it and, and go with it. And so some of the trimming stuff is, out, is just out the window once you get a handle on it, but you do have to, you just kind of get over the hump of uh, the resistance, you know. Um, and I, I think that something that I put in the opening, uh, what do they call it, the first thing in the book, the prelude or whatever, the, uh, it's like people are looking to relate knowledge and they're saying, okay, uh, I had it. There, I have this button over here on the Avid. Where's this button? And you know that that button might not be there, but there's a way to accomplish the button. Um, and so you kind of got to bend your mind a little bit. But it's it's really when you when you do, it's fast and it's cool and it works. Ladies first. Um, there is there's keywords, which is like one of the primary functions. And if you take you know all of your all of your keywords, all of your shots that are wide shots, and Apple K, I see how old I am, I say Apple, put Command K, um, and then say WS. And then that word is associated with those shots, and underneath uh, your scene, let me just jump over to, um, how do you get out of this? Um, this is the movie, if you can see it up here, with all, all the scenes and cuts and whatnot. Um, but uh, underneath any of these, uh, these are all keyword collections uh, of, of stuff that's going on. Um, sorry, let me just fix something here. None. Um, we had gone through, and, and I think Sam did a, uh, Sam Messman, wherever you are, had did a video on this where, this is a, the poor man's version of script sync. Uh, these are, this is lines. Uh, the script, the line, the script was numbered, line one, two, three, four, five, six, seven for each scene and like all the readings of line 31 through 33, just that part are right here. Um, and uh, so you can say wide shot or close up or whatever for in this same way. So underneath any one scene here, if you click right there where I'm clicked, you're, that's all the dailies from scene three. Uh, this is all the stuff that's for the, uh, for the gag reel. These are all the first lines one through three. Um, you can do that for wide shots, close ups, whatever. And so if you lay that stuff out, it, in advance, then you just, in, whether you are in this list mode here, and you know, you, you have, uh, if anyone you click on is gonna sort of come up up here on top and you'll see a little strip of what it is. Uh, you can do it in the list mode or in the mode of, you know, just tiles, what people are used to seeing. So yeah, that would be the way to, to do that. And you can get really specific with it. And you can also do it with multiple things, like if it was a wide shot for Michael. It, you can search for either one of those or all of those and collect those in a way. And there's ways to, like, uh, this is like sort of a smart search thing and you can say uh, keywords. So these are all the keywords that are in this, uh, in this event. And you can select, you know, include any, uh, in, uncheck all and say, all right, just show me th this set of lines and this set of lines and, and then it'll show you just that stuff or all the wide shots from those lines or all the wide shots of Michael from those lines. And so, yeah, that's, that's what I would do there. Yes? Uh, one of your first slides, you mentioned sharing. Yeah. Um, uh, how are you doing sharing, and were you using shared storage in what time? Uh, we had an XSAN, and uh, it was 96 terabytes of uh, something storage. I don't remember <laughs> exactly what. Since there are Fiber. projects, yeah. uh, how are you doing uh, we had uh, like what we're calling transport libraries. So 
and I can show you what's, what something like that looks like. We had, we had these things called work libraries, which uh, you know, if you as the editor want to hand off something to me, you have, uh, you have this and, and you're the editor and you have, uh, this will open up eventually, it's massive. Um, it has all the scenes, all the, all the scene events, bins, um, all the cuts, and you can put the cut you want to give to me in its own event, copy it into a library, and I open up that library on the other side and pull it out and, or do whatever I need to do with it. Um, we would have, uh, oh man, this, this huge project. Anyways, we would have, uh, if you can see there on the, the left, I don't know if you can read it, there's the bottom library there. Is, one is work and one is original. So I bring in the original uh, thing, duplicate the sequence into a work you know, event, and then do all the work that needed to be done to it. Um, for example, um, this, uh, oh geez. <laughs> It's, 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 we had a Mac Pro, it helped. Um, so, uh, you know, visual effects update. Uh, something for a change note, which was just picture only reduced to, you know, the minimum stuff, because that was to change note we were concerned with, you know, for audio EDLs or any, but idea, basically the idea is you put what you want to send to someone in an event, and then that library containing that event gets opened up on the, in the destination, and it's open from there. How do you get it out? Um, well, I'll go, let me just step through it for you. It's, it's pretty cool the way it works. Um, the, it reads multi-channel WAV files, okay? So the smart way to do this is to use a program called Sync and Link, and you get your picture, which may or may not have sound on it, and then Sync and Link the audio to it. Um, what you'll end up with is s stuff like, uh, ch -ch -ch -ch, let's see, Channel configuration? Yeah, that's what I'm looking for. Okay, so you see this here where this is uh, your storyline audio and the camera had four tracks of sound running and then this is the connected uh, audio or audio that was synced to it down here, a mono mix, a boom, a second boom, a plant mic. Um, and all this stuff comes in like this and if you look at any one of these shots, you can see all of your tracks laid out in the timeline. You can deal with them in the inspector on the right, turning on and off what you want to have. Ideally, you are working with the mono mix. Even if you have all the mics stacked up underneath it, all that stuff gets turned off, and that's something you do in the, while you're processing your dailies. When it's time to get it out, um, there are settings in Extra Pro, which this isn't my computer, so I don't have it, but uh, there's setting, uh, when you're turning tracks off, you're doing what's called disabling. Uh, and so the disabled tracks, you can tell Extra Pro to exclude or include them and so if you want to have, it, it, be working with the mono mix, but include all the microphones for your sound editor, you s just set your preferences correctly in Extra Pro, and it will take all that stuff and give them a really widespread of tracks that are all sunk up. Um, it, uh, and it also, you can have it break it out by role or sub-role. So the sub, like if you had, um, let me just look at this here. Yeah, this is a good example. Um, so all these mono mix, iso boom, second boom, far plant, mid stereo, side stereo, bald guy, Nikki, Jess. Okay, so these are all microphones. And all that stuff can come across if you tell Extra Pro to include disabled. All those tracks would also drop down on the timeline. And one really cool thing that I wish I could show you here, but I don't have the media, is you can get into these tracks at this level. Like if you have a clip in your timeline, you can expand those components and it'll be like, you know, four or six or nine, however many microphones you have and you can actually get into the individual mics and edit them within the clip. So I want your microphone, your microphone, your microphone, your microphone, just for these sections around the clip. So you kind of make a checkerboard and then collapse it all and it all goes into one thing and it's out of your way. Clip by clip. Clip by clip. No. I will tell you, I'll tell you uh, yeah. that 10-1-1 was slow. We had uh, the movie broken in half, so two libraries working. 10-1-2, you could have the whole movie, including like, at one point I had loaded up the entire movie, it looks like this, including all the cuts, and cuts are what slows it down, like an abundance of cuts. Uh, four entire versions, separate versions of the movie, preview one, two, three, four, and lock picture, or preview one, two, three, and lock picture. Uh, and so basically like 24, sequences, 115 scenes, and 10-1-2, I was running it 
uh, on a iMac with a gigantic USB copy running in the background, and it's like a 32, not a, not, the iMac was pretty tricked out, but it was, it was still an iMac. I had a, a gigantic USB copy running in the background, uh, which was like me, original media to a USB 2 drive, um, and the movie opening, playing, editing, waveforms rendering, 1012 is crazy fast, and that was, you know, a movie that ended up being 100, 100 odd minutes, whatever it is, but it's a, it's a, you know, it's a big 2K movie, and, and it was fine. If I, if it was my choice, I would choose it. Okay. Yeah. Can you repeat that question just for <laughs> the, the question was, were we running gigantic, beefy mystery hardware to support the movie, and the answer is no. We were working from IMAX, uh, laptops, and one Mac Pro that we got way late. And would you choose? Oh, he said, it, would I use it again? And uh, I said, yes, it would be my choice. If I had the choice, I would choose to use it the way it works. Um, sir? We have time for Okay. Uh, with everything being in ProRes, it's, it's pretty easy. Would you think that it would scale pretty well throwing in some raw media like Red or Ari Raw or um, whatever else we're going to be seeing? Ari Raw, not as far as I know. Some, uh, Sam, Ari Raw? No Ari Raw. No Ari Raw. I mean, it's fr that's frame based. Uh, but I can tell you, like Red, Red for example, hold on a second. Um, Just more in general. Um, yeah. Well, like this is red for, I, I was, I'm missing the red plugin. Okay, here it is. Um, so this is red, this is a laptop that I've never seen before. This is a USB 3 drive. This is red R3D 4K um, media. And it's playing. It's only an iPhone processor. Yeah. And, and so the, the answer is, uh, yeah, you can, you can do it. And I think that the problem with stuff is just the media is massive. And where do you put it all? And if somebody's going to work with, you know, Red 4K, 5K, 6K, whatever, you, you kind of have to make proxies because it's just massive. And but the proxies you're working with, and I'll let me just one one more thing, which is really cool here. And I just found I know very little about Red, but you can take this Red stuff uh, and you can modify the Red RAW settings. Oh, damn it, uh, Red. Okay, blah blah blah. Anyways, um, you can modify your Red settings there and. It shows up right there magically, and it, if, you've, if you're working with proxy media, it'll burn another proxy for you that it, uh, is appropriate for the setting you just made. So it's really cool with the red media. I would, uh, uh, I vote for that. Being a system on many projects myself, I know I keep a copy of like, every output that I ever make mm -hmm. for people. Do you, but you were just saying like one sequence, one event might have like uh, 10 or 12 sequences in it. So I feel like sometimes in my projects I have like 100 sequences. No, no, well that's, that's a good point. And what I did was when we were turning over, and we turned over six reels between 13 and 20 versions each, um, I put one sequence in, in its own library, like for, the, for, for posterity. So one sequence in all the broken down versions of it. And that's basically what, what this is here, this work thing down here. These are all the versions of this reel five version 10, uh, all the ones that I needed. And uh, you know, this is, there's other ones that are more detailed or whatever, but this is basically the idea where if, I if you get a turnover, you make a library, lives unto itself. You can even consolidate that library so it has all the media that's associated with it, uh, and it's a fully in enclosed package, uh, and it can walk from one machine to another, and you don't have to worry about it, or one you know part of the world from another. So, so thank you, Mike Madsdorf. <clears throat>